Today on Things I Found Online, we found hashtag film Twitter, and we're all about it. We're ushering in award season, and it's an honor to just be nominated to be joined by Matt Neglia from the Next Best Picture podcast and Ted Willett from the Trailer Junkies podcast. Me, I'm Joe Cipriano, along with Jack Daniel. Yay. For details, please see my co-host, Louise Palenker, rated PG-13. We... <laughs> Yes, Joe, that was award-winning. Wow. So let's get right into it. Matt Niglia, are you there? I am here. Live via Zoom. There's Matt. Where are you and who are you? <laughs> well, Matt is uh, at, where am I? He's at the top uh, of a mountain. <laughs> all right. I know, seriously, I, I'm, I'm in my room. No, I'm <laughs> over right now in uh, New York at the moment. Wow. And I think right now is a, it's a good time to be in either New York or LA as award season is going on. There's mm -hmm. a lot of great screenings happening on both sides of the country at the mm -hmm. moment. Yep. A lot of Academy members, uh, Screen Actors Guild members, <laughs> and uh, anyone that's part of any guild essentially are catching these award season titles right now. Lollipop and Guild. That's what we track on nextbestpicture.com. We track the award season all year long for 365 d days a year. So wow. you're so you're always talking about awards. That's the focus of your site, your blog, your podcast. Yep. 24 seven. I mean, because the funny thing is, as soon as the year ends and we're finished with all of our top 10 lists and all of the awards that get handed out, mm -hmm. we're heading to Sundance in January and some titles that will premiere at Sundance will be in the Oscar conversation next year. Yeah. So it's right back all into it all so over cool. again. Yeah. How mm -hmm. early can you predict if something is going to be buzzworthy? Upon you know, it's, it. it's funny because like when you watch something, you kind of do get a feeling and that feeling is based upon trends and what the Academy has gone for in the past. Mm -hmm. What makes the this year actually more interesting than others is that their membership has grown exponentially by the thousands. Yeah. Wow. So this could be a year where we actually get a different slate of nominees um, that is unlike anything that we've actually ever seen. Yeah, before. finally. Yeah. You know what I think? I think uh, look for tears and drool. <laughs> <laughs> That's not far from the truth. <laughs> tears and drool. Yeah. It's a band from the 1980s. Yeah. Either you're a heroin yeah. addict or you're mentally challenged, you know, whatever it is. Leonardo DiCaprio played it and won. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so now also look at the handsomeness that is wow, right here in studio. Right here. Ted Willett in the flesh wearing pretty and green. His his best christmas t-shirt is yeah, that's right <laughs> Christmas slash film, you know. He stole it right off the back of Andy Williams. I watched it happen. It was, it was criminal. Um, so you're here with uh, from Trailer Junkies podcast, and this is your fourth or fifth appearance on our show because you're a you're a fan favorite. I'm a fan favorite. I'm uh, I'm like the Tom Hanks of Tifo. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. So tell us tell us if if people are new to Tifo, what is Trailer Junkies podcast? So Trailer Junkies podcast is a podcast I started with my friend about a year ago, um, and rather there's tons of uh, movie blogs and podcasts out there, as Matt knows. And Matt has a cool angle with the awards and having a marketing background, being in um, media marketing for the past 13 years now, um, I thought it'd be interesting to dissect and talk about the marketing behind all this media. So that's what we do. We do trailers and movie posters and all of the, the uh, surrounding media around <clears throat> the media business mm -hmm. cool. do you ever do a show uh about how uh, to strategize so that you can make your popcorn last beyond <laughs> the trailers <laughs> well no yeah we always do the we get the refill right at the beginning mm. and oh, i think go. amc knows now they they uh <laughs> they give you the box to go with the box so they'll they'll actually oh, yeah, dump you overflow dump your, yeah. Yeah. yeah they'll dump uh your you get one free refill so they'll They'll give it to you in the box and say, we'll fill your bag again. So. I have a friend who keeps his uh, popcorn under the seat during trailers and doesn't pull it out until the movie uh, begins. Yeah. That is a man who has um, perfected delayed gratification. Yes, yes. <laughs> I can't eat until at least something is playing that's not an ad. I mean, the trailer's fine, but it yeah. has to be part of the show mm -hmm. for me. Not the trivia. I no, like not that. the trivia. <laughs> trivia does not count. I love it, but I won't, I won't eat. All right. So I need the two of you to help us out with something. Uh, explain the tw the f explain the film Twitter community. Hmm. Well, yeah, I I think I 
Weezy said that I'm doing this, but I've only been doing this for a year. So I was like, let me lean on some of the hey, people. <laughs> you have you, you have the gift catalog of someone who's been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> I mean, because well it said, seems like f- film Twitter is, is full of polls and memes and gifts and yeah. all kinds mm-hmm. of fancy fun stuff. Yeah. So I, I like film Twitter. Um, it's a great handle for what we do as a business um, as far as podcasting goes. And for me, it was a way to escape politics and kind of feel like you can you can have discussions that that can be guided away from trolliness mm, um, film nice. twitter is is for the most part um you know everybody has opinions uh, but since i started i kind of just tried to steer towards the idea of respecting other people's opinions and uh sharing, mm-hmm. sharing so my own. so do you find that if people disagree there's just less kind of like jumping on someone's business are people a little bit kinder with no, 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 <laughs> not, Matt. not, 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 for, Matt. Star, not for Star Wars and, yeah. and for okay. big franchises. Oh, so, God. But, oh yeah. my God, that was rough. Yeah. So what are the partisan lines that we might find in film Twitter? Woke versus unwoke. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Only one. Yeah. Uh, another one is definitely if you like The Last Jedi or if you did not like The Last Jedi. Right, as, right. Was that's huge. Yeah. Um, and another one too is this idea now that anybody can be a movie reviewer or a mm-hmm. film critic, everybody wants to say that everybody else is wrong and that they are right, but mm-hmm. they don't seem to ever want to give any reasoning or context as to why that is. They just simply want to shout loudly that somebody is wrong. Are you yeah. reading my tweets right now? <laughs> <laughs> so there's as much alpha dogging, uh, dogging as anywhere else in the oh, world. Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. Because the internet gives you that ability to have a platform for yourself. And, you know, it's kind of a golden opportunity. If you're not taking advantage of it, then what are you doing on this, you know, in this space? Yeah. But I do think that some people go about it the wrong way. There's people who don't want to work hard, don't want to put in the effort, and instead are looking to take down people who are more established and have careers mm. actually doing this sort of thing. And they will, I mean, whether it's trolling or if you want to just say they got a chip on their shoulder because they feel like they're smarter than the person that has made it, everybody is just very, very quick to jump on somebody's um, takes on movies or their Oscar predictions or anything at all that has any kind of semblance of an opinion tied to it Mm. and just quickly say that they're wrong. And I think with one thing with film Twitter, it can be a great place. But I think that's provided only if you know um, who the right people are to follow Ten. and if you're utilizing the <laughs> right. mute and block bus button accordingly. If you're not uh, and you're just following everybody, yeah. mm-hmm. you're going to definitely get a mixture of both positive and toxicity. Hmm. I see. So in other words, if you've established anything um, with with your your platform online, there's going to be some guy who hasn't who wants to take you down and that's his way of building him up. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. All the time. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just, you, you know, for example, if I put out like an idea of, oh, I think so and so is going to win the Oscar, potentially, I'll get a bunch of people just say, you're absolutely wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one thing to say, I don't think that will happen. And right. here's why, but you get a lot of people that are very, very confident that they are right and you are absolutely wrong. And it's all because I, I believe it really does come from a place of jealousy and envy. I really, really believe that. But it's more than that, too. It's also just this sort of, forgive me for being sexist, but men pissing on everything and saying, this is mine and I I, I owned you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> that's just sure. a way of dominance or supremacy or something in age. I think it's, uh, they refer to it as, I just Jack daniel you. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I prefer to call yeah. it. But that's wrong, actually. <laughs> All right. Hey, so hey, put that away. <laughs> know that you are um, among friends, Matt, and oh, we yeah. would Despite like to hear your uh, picks for Oscar this year. Ooh, cool. Oh, my God. And get, re- get ready to jump on him, Jack. I will. <laughs> so do, Wrong. Do you want to know winners? Do you want to know what's going to be nominated? What, yeah. What do you want yeah, sure. What are you thinking? Well, so it's funny. I, I kind of changed my mind on a weekly basis now um, because the season is still in its early stages at the moment. Yeah. We're getting nominations for the Golden Globes, the Critics' Choice Awards. Tomorrow, we'll, we will receive the Screen Actors Guild Awards uh, mm-hmm. nominations. And this is all starting to play into a general consensus of what we're starting to see is going to be nominated for the acting categories for Best Picture. 
Um, right now, as of today, I believe the best picture winner is going to be A Star is Born. Um. And I believe that because it made a lot of money. Yeah. I definitely think while it may not be a number one film by many, I think it definitely is up in the top five if you're ranking all of the movies for a lot of people in that three, number two, number four. Mm -hmm. And the way that Best Picture gets voted on is through something called a uh, preferential ballot. It's not a plural ballot where you just pick one of the Mm. nine or eight, however many Best Picture nominees uh, it is. You have to rank them all. Mm -hmm. And it's this very, very wacky voting process. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, what you want to do is you want to be ranked high on the ballot. Oh, so they're like main. (laughs) <laughs> like me. Yeah, I see. You pick one, two, three. It, 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 I, no, I, I'm not a big fan of this system personally. Okay. I like the old system where they just voted uh, for one winner from five nominees. Or I mean, hell, I would like if they would just went back to a straight ten and just made it simple. Yeah, it sounds like the kind of ballot where if someone walks in the room while you're filling it out, you're like, oh my god, I have to start at the beginning. <laughs> I don't remember where I was. So uh, maybe, hey, Matt, I, I, don't, I don't think people think about it that much. Honestly, okay. I think they just like say oh this was my favorite film of the year and here are the other ones i don't think people think about it too too much when they're filling but out I, their ballot i kind of like the idea of going like five four three two one is because it, mm-hmm. it could be really close you'd be torn and so that other film that you also love should get some credit and that's cool and you're mm-hmm. not ex- yeah you don't like lose few, everything by saying i like this movie to the exclusion of all others yeah. right. I like that. you know yeah. if, if in the first round of voting if your number one choice gets knocked out then your number two choice now becomes your number one choice so I yeah see. how yeah. you rank it is extremely <clears throat> important right. Do you think people I, pay a proper attention to that to that ranking, or is it more like here's number one and the then voters. whatever? Yeah, I hope so because I know I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so I can tell. If I'm devoting all of my time to trying to figure it out, I hope that they're taking it seriously too. And I definitely think that in this day and age of the internet and podcasts like my own, because you know there's a lot of other podcasts out there to talk about this, and I I definitely think word has gone around that these awards matter. They mm-hmm. are important. Um, to a certain degree, obviously, most of the time it's fun, but yeah, they are important. I think in terms of uh, the cultural conversation, at least. Oh, and, and career changing about. as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are a member sure. of the Academy, Matt? No, no, absolutely not, Ted. <laughs> Well, I have a tangential membership to SAG, so we just paid, paid my daughter SAG dues, so we should mm-hmm. be getting her screeners for that. The nice. important question is, are we getting screeners in the mail? That is yes. where I was Which going. Which you destroy <laughs> after viewing, right? We, destroy, told you. we destroy just after make viewing. Sure. You know, we're lucky in our family. I get SAG screeners, which, you know, kind of trickle in, but uh, my wife is in Director's Guild, so yeah. we get... Tons. We just when saw, am I coming over? Uh, Mary Poppins uh, returns. I'm on my way. Uh, which doesn't come out until <laughs> December 19th. Yeah. So, what do you think, in Ted, in terms of Oscars? You must have given this some thought. Um, I'm. I don't know. I'm going to see the favorite tonight, so I'm happy Ooh. about that. Oh yeah, um, very I'm, good. I know. It, mm. I don't think it's anywhere in the contest. What do you think, um, mm. Matt? It's not. It's not in there. Right? Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not going to so, win. It's too um, small. Its best chance at a win is in screenplay right now. What about wardrobe? Uh, wardrobe too, possibly, right? Yeah, I definitely think Mary Poppins is going to give it a um, run for his money down yeah. costume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the costumes and the favorite are my favorite of the year. So, <laughs> um, blood splatter. I think it will win that. <laughs> <laughs> but but as far as best picture, I I'm I'm really interested. I think um, Star Star is Born is a strong one. I think the dual lead in that makes it mm-hmm. makes it a right. more yeah, more right. uh, a better looking winner a mm-hmm. better looking also uh, a potential contestant. win for sam elliott and supporting too true yeah. so if it gets that's say, right. three wins yeah. in acting i mean that's huge that is huge yeah, yeah. and he was it's great gonna win in that. song in a walk yeah. <laughs> yeah shallow was nominated for grammys for song of the year there's no way it's going to win <laughs> yeah well, i have a theory about song though matt because um my friend, and this is, I am name dropping, but it's okay. okay. But my friend, oh, I know where you're going. My friend Diane Warren is nominated every Our year. Friend, Our Diane friend Diane Warren, Warren yes. <laughs> my pal, and, Diane Warren. And she doesn't win. And here's why I think, and this is a theory, I think the winner for best song is the song that goes in the Disney movie that that is playing in the household nonstop so that the parents hear it over and over and over and over again. So it's if Coco or, was that the name of the movie? Yeah. 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 So whatever the Disney movie is that it's just playing cuz the the song is on a loop in in the person's head who's voting. So the thing if you're a songwriter to do is get your get your song in a in a Disney or a Pixar movie. Mhm. Okay. It's, it's not a bad theory. theory. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>
Because that, that's a kind of a throwaway vote for a lot of people. They're like, song. All right, I know this one. Yeah. You're wrong, but it yeah. was an interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so what what else? Best actor, best actress. Hmm. What are some other? Uh, or, or for really? actor, it's going to be Bradley Cooper. I yeah. have yeah. no doubt in my body whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, I've seen Christian Bale in Vice. I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I think I can say this. He's very good. Yeah. He's so but, much fun to watch. I love watching him act. Yeah, he's yeah. a previous winner, though. Mm-hmm. Cooper has never won. Mm-hmm. He yeah. poured every single fiber of his being <clears throat> in this movie. And while I don't know if they're going to reward him with director, mm. I think it makes a lot of sense to give him the actor award if they aren't going to give him director. He might win both, uh, potentially. But if he doesn't win director, say someone else does, um, I think actor is the more surefire way to acknowledge him. He also has a lot of nominations uh, pri- for prior films. Yeah. Um, he's at the right stage in his career. I-, I think it just makes the most sense. I love this it's insight. Crazy. It's really Good it's stuff. not how I, I yeah. don't have all these these data. Starting points. to get excited. Yeah. Yeah, right. I really season. like I really like Bale for it though. I really I think yeah. you know you, you do. put you put that kind of uh, work into it and you. You, f- you risk future diabetes, which I'm sure he's on the road to. And yeah, he's done it before too. <laughs> That's yeah. you know you do that roller coaster and you get it. Yeah. So did Vito only- did Vito gain weight for for Green Book? Oh uh, yeah, he did actually. Because that um, was pretty the, amazing. The issue though with that movie is I really believe you know before we were t- I was talking about woke versus unwoke mm-hmm. optics of Green Book is something that's been a huge, huge discussion since it premiered at Toronto earlier this year. Okay. And how it handles the story of racism from the perspective of the white uh, character in the story and kind of sidelines the supporting character played by Mahershala Ali and doesn't really give him Mm. kind of his own... um, his own perspective, point of view on the story. Now, granted, a lot of that is because the character that Viggo Mortensen plays in the film... Uh, in real life, that character's or, or or person rather, his son is the one who wrote the screenplay. Right, right. it's his story. Yeah. yeah, right. So I get that, and I'm not saying that he should not write about his parents or anything like that. Like that's not where you know that's not my place to say that sort of thing. But I definitely think that the movie wants us to believe that this is a fifty fifty split role between Vigo and Mahershala Ali. Not mm-hmm. based on what they're up for. They're up for best actor and best supporting. And that's exactly what it is. And I think that a lot of people have written enough think pieces about that to uh, hurt Viggo Mortensen's chances at winning the Best Actor Oscar for it. If that film's going to win anything, it could win for Mahershala Ali again in supporting two years after he won for Moonlight. And he could pull a mm. Christoph Waltz, who did wow. the same thing yeah, uh, right. a couple of years ago for Bastards and for Django Unchained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are a wealth. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Have here. you ever come home from a movie based on a true story and felt inspired to Google the truth behind the story? Oh, yeah. There is a great site that uh, we found called History versus Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So we're going to pull that up and we're going to take a look at some of these. Because I know like this year with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, oh, yeah. like a lot oh, of people gosh, were just like, yeah. oh, my God, I can't wait to come home and, and watch that concert and on YouTube. Uh, and, and, yeah, I and did. And see, was and this really... Absolutely. And you know, it's amazing how they... Uh, they mimicked, you know, almost exactly to what the reality was. Yeah, you know, it's unbelievable. So we're going to start with the Black Klansman. Uh, and I just pulled out, and you, Jack and Joe, you can help me read, or anyone who has the rundown up on their phone. Cause and I, has their letters. Are you ready to start reading the first question, uh, Jack? Did Ron Stallworth really infiltrate the KKK? If not, there's really no movie, is yeah. there? And do I continue or do I? Yeah. Okay. The answer is Yes. Yes. <laughs> In October 1978, African-American detective Ron Stallworth successfully infiltrated the local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan, or KKK, in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The movie is based on Stallworth's 2014 book, Black Klansman, which details his experience. Like in the movie, or I would say as as in the movie, Mm -hmm. he initiated contact by Mm -hmm. responding to a classified ad in the local newspaper. Hmm. Wow. Mm You got the next one, Joe? Yes. Is Stallworth's romantic interest in the movie... Uh, Patrice Dumas, based on a real person. Anybody? Anybody? I'm going to say no. No. Based on my rundown, no. (laughs) No. In the uh, Black Klansman movie, Ron Stallworth, John David Washington, develops a relationship with an activist college student named Patrice Dumas, Laura Harrier, 
Uh, director Spike Lee has said that Patrice is fictional and was inspired by the women of the the women of the Black uh, Power movement. Stallworth did attend a Black student event just before the undercover investigation started, but that's where the similarities with real life end. The romance mm. depicted in the film presents an interesting conflict, but in fact, it is fictional. Ah, which means it's not true. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you are. You got the you next are correct, Jack. Thank Ted, you for paying attention. Ted. Ted, you got the next one? I have to read. Please. <laughs> you could do it. Stand Come up. Come on, Ted. Stand next to your desk. <laughs> All right. Was Ron Stallworth's partner really Jewish? Joe? I would say meh. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just finished the second season of uh of uh, Mrs. Maisel. So there's oh, a lot of- you finished it already? <laughs> it's uh, so I'm only good. two I'm episodes through, in. Yeah. I'm three. Yeah. Oh, three you're three in? Three deep, oh, yeah. Man. So the answer to this is no. In the movie, Ron Stallworth's partner, Flip Zimmerman, Adam Driver, is accused of being Jewish by the KKK. Flip's entire Jewish heritage in the film is fictional. Hmm. And so is the lie detector test that the KKK forced him to take. The filmmaker seems to have added this element so that Flip has skin in the game, as stalworth mm-hmm. John David Washington mm-hmm. says in the film. Skin in the game. Did Ron Stallworth really have conversations with David Duke, the national director of the KKK? Can I interrupt for one second? I'm so sorry, Louise, but here's a question for you guys. Is it an anachronism to say skin in the game at that time? Mm. Huh. Mm. Matt, you know everything. <laughs> <Matt>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, Weezy. Okay. I just thought I'd throw that out there. I would say uh, since High School Musical had not come out yet, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good data point. Uh, did Ron Starworth really have conversations with David Duke, the national director of the KKK? Yes. Hmm. During one of the phone conversations, Stallworth asked David Duke, aren't you afraid of an undercover police officer infiltrating your organization or maybe a black man calling and pretending to be white? Duke told Stallworth that wouldn't happen because he could always tell when he was talking on the phone to a black person Duke used the N-word. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, And true and fun Hollywood fact, John David Washington's famous father is? John David Washington. Famous Mm -hmm. father is? Denzel. Denzel. Oh, Denzel, of course. (laughs) I mean, I mean Denzel. (laughs) Yeah. I should have known. So, um... If do you, I don't know if you have your rundown in front of you because I would let you read, but I don't want to give you an assignment, uh, Matt. Oh, Matt. To, I don't. To Boy Erased. <laughs> Boy Erased. I'll whisper the words and you just say them right after I do. <laughs> Boy Erased. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Jack. Go, okay. Jack. The true story told in, is it Gerard or Gerard? It's pronounced Gerard. I was going to say oh. that. Gar- Gerard Conley's book is somewhat accurately depicted in the film. The names are changed and certain characters are created to articulate the main character's thoughts, which are beautifully voiced in the book. I will now read the link. <laughs> Boy erased. Or should I give a hand off the next paragraph? <laughs> no, that's for Keep those going, guys Jack. to click on the link. Oh, please click <laughs> on the link, along. <laughs> Keep going, Jack. There it you're, is. It's a book. You've got this. Okay. You've Boy erased this. tells the story of. Did I already say that? No, Garrett. it's just another line that has the exact same thing. Boy erased <laughs> tells the story of Garrett Conley, Jared in the film, who was raised in Arkansas with an evangelical Christian family and community. Being gay is simply not an acceptable option, and his, par- his parents sent him to a conversion program in Memphis called Love in Action. Plot points are inserted which heighten and accelerate the drama, the danger, and the hypocrisy. What's most evident in the book, though, is the author's expressive voice, which is best conveyed in the, in the title, Boy Erased. Any attempt to remove one aspect of a person's character will corrode all of it. Mm. So say we all. Well, yes. <laughs> this was written by me because it was not included in Hollywood versus history and I had read the book. So I felt oh, very like good, very nice. Mm-hmm. I felt they, they did a <clears throat> they did a good job, but like any other book that's turned into Turn a movie, in, yeah. you know, books are probably like ten hours long if right. you, and books and and so the movie has to get hit the plot points and mm-hmm. And, and create that tension and that drama. And sometimes you just, one person will say a thing in a movie that the narrator in the book took many pages to express. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Uh, so I, I, thought, well I thought it was excellent. What do you think, Matt? Um, I, I'm, I'm a person that, to be honest, I love movies so much and I don't want to go into a movie with a preconceived idea of what that movie is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually avoid reading 
any source material before I see the movie. Mm. Okay, I'm going to take that my... little sound bite that just says, I actually avoid I reading. <laughs> I'm going to clip that out. <laughs> no, it, it's a well-known fact. Yes. I, I, well, I, you I, know, I, with that in mind, you can do. be president of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> no, I, I read other kinds of books, but I don't read books that will be adapted into... I see. They have the movies. word comic in front of them. I just, <laughs> it has been my experience that whenever I do see a movie, and I have seen, or I'm sorry, I've read the book prior beforehand, I don't enjoy the movie as much. Mm-hmm. Will you read, and will, will you if read I do the, book the opposite after? instead, where mm-hmm. if I read the book after, yeah. it enriches the movie ah. a little bit. Cool. See, like I, have the, I have the opposite experience yeah. with that because when I, when I see a movie first and then I read the book, I have to invest the characters with the movie people and I can't create them mm, in my okay. head. Yeah, so yeah. it's a little different for me. No, I'd rather read it first. Yeah. I like to read the book first because I don't expect the movie to be true to the book. I mm-hmm. see them as two different art forms and yeah. so I give well, that's the, what it's supposed to be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I give the film a ton of leeway. Like in Boy Race, for example, like they created all these characters that were not in the book, but and they, they use very little, they didn't use any narration. I thought they could have used narration because he's so expressive in the book. Mm-hmm. And in, in the movie, the kid comes across as kind of flat because he, he he's shut down. In the book, you, you feel all every aspect of his personality that is just being destroyed by this ridiculous program. So, yeah, I mean, the movie is is its own thing and you're you're going to get probably one thing out of it if you haven't read the book mm. and yeah. that's always interesting to see to think about what would this be like for me like with um beautiful boy like i read both books like what would this be like for me if i only saw the movie and i didn't know what i know from having read mm. both the father and the son's book so yeah it just really depends on how how you like approaching things mm. yeah mm. i think that's true because i don't like playing uh, well, what if they did this? Or what if they took out that? Oh, I wish they had added in this. Oh, and I just, I think Harry Potter ruined that whole experience for me when mm. I was a kid. Okay. And hearing so many people just complain about how, oh, the books did it so much better. Mm. And I, heard that and I saw the movies and I was like, I don't understand how anybody could say these movies are bad. And they're not saying the movies are bad because they're a movie. Right. They're saying they're bad because they've read these books and it couldn't measure up to uh-huh. that experience. And that's when I kind of made a rule with myself where I was like, read books after, mm-hmm. enrich that experience. And for me, because of the way I do process information and how I, I'm a visual learner, it does actually help me mm-hmm. when I uh, am able to put those characters I saw in the movie in the place of my imagination when I read the book. Oh, so okay. everybody's different. Yeah, everybody's different. There different. is no right or wrong way, I and don't I, think. And I think <laughs> it's important to keep in mind that books and movies are co- two completely different forms of storytelling. And yeah. so they have to have different devices just by necessity. So expect them to be different. Don't expect it to just be a copy. That wouldn't right. That wouldn't be the right way to approach it. Anyway, and like so, you said, it would be twenty hours long. So, it'd be really yeah. long. Yeah. Yes. You know, pack a lunch. Yeah. All right, Bohemian Bohemian Rhapsody. Joe. Bohemian Rhapsody. Did Freddie? I actually uh, was wondering about this. Did okay. Freddie Mercury really remain close friends with his one-time girlfriend Mary Austin? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Freddie met Mary Austin when he was a starving musician. They moved in together, hmm. and she did support him uh, for a time. She was really the one person that he trusted. He remained friends even after they broke up in 1976 when he was coming to terms with his sexuality. And during a 1985 interview, Freddie said of Mary, quote, all my lovers asked me why they couldn't replace Mary, but it's simply impossible. The only friend I've got is Mary, and I don't want anybody else, unquote. She was the person he trusted most throughout his career, and that's supported in the movie for sure. Mm -hmm. Mary Austin still lives in Freddie's home. How about that? In Kensington, England, with her family. Wow. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty great. I love that movie, by the way. I still haven't seen it. I'm I'm such a fool for not seeing it. I'm such a fool. (laughs) All right, well, this, you know, then spoiler alert. (laughs) Yeah. Um, He dies. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Was Queen. Sorry, Matt. Have you seen it? I have seen okay, it. Okay, I've, I've seen I've seen everything at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Matt. <laughs> I was joking. Of course. Was Queen's performance at the 1985 Live Aid concert really as big as it's made out to be in the movie? Jack? I'm going to say yes and no. Ah, <laughs> it's a trick question. How about that? I, don't, I didn't know you were allowed to do that. <laughs> well, I read it, so I am. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what? what? Keep talking. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Live Aid was not a reunion for the band. In real life, they had actually released their album, The Works, in early 1984 and had been on a world tour. They were already well rehearsed for Live Aid. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's fascinating. 
Despite the band's personal story being less dramatic, their performance at Live Aid was just as impressive as it is depicted as is depicted in the movie. And yes, that is true. And I've seen it and watched it recently. YouTube, it's fantastic. Yeah. Queen's 20-minute set at the July 13, 1985 Live Aid concert held at Wembley Stadium in London is considered by many notable notable music publications to be one of the greatest rock performances of all time. Louise, where were you July 13, 1985? Probably with you, Joe. Probably you were at, at Kiss uh, AM at, at or Kiss FM. AM or FM, <laughs> writing my life away. Yes. For Rick D's and Premier Radio Network. That's true. <laughs> I, I may have missed Live Aid, so I. <laughs> yeah, right. But, I, but you know, I hear, we gave I, away tickets. I, I hear think. good things. <laughs> uh, Ted, would you read oh. about Green Book? Come Green on, Book. Ah, here he, here he comes. Here we go, Ted. Okay. We're going to be talking up. about Green Book. Tony Lip. And Tony Lip. You can't make up that name. No. That's awesome. Had Tony Lip really been racist before going on the trip with Don Shirley? Yes. The film was co-written by Tony's son, Nick. Now I don't know this. Valalonga. 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 Hey. Valalonga. Hey. Hey, Valalonga. <laughs> Valalonga. <laughs> Who is the, <clears throat> depicted as a child in the film, according to Nick... Uh, uh, Maybe a typo, but according, I'm, according had, to me. According to Nick, uh, <laughs> he had indeed he been had racist. Indeed oh. racist before the trip with a musician, Don Shirley, uh, attributing it to growing up in the Italian-American streets of the Bronx. Mm -hmm. In the movie Lip, Viggo Mortensen uses racial slurs. He throws away drinking glasses uh, that black repairmen mm -hmm. had used in his home, all that went <clears throat> away after he became friends with Dr. Shirley. And after this crazy trip they took together, and what happened to them, uh, says Vala Valalonga. Valalonga. Lip was uh, lip wit uh, witness. <laughs> lip witness That's easy the for ways you to in say. which Shirley. How you equipped Valalonga. The ways Valalonga, in which uh, Don Shirley was discriminated against and humiliated. This included not being able to eat in the restaurants where he performed, or even to use their restrooms. He also witnessed physical acts of violence against Shirley. Nick says that the trip significantly changed his father, and it changed the way he raised his children, instilling in them the truth that we are all human. Mm -hmm. um, Jack. Uh, are we? Uh, but uh, isn't it Joe's turn? Oh, Joe! Uh, uh, what a nice I, fella. I believe in fairness. Joe, well, thank you. Uh, did John? Did Don Shirley really live in an apartment above Carnegie Hall? Yes, as mm -hmm. depicted in the Green Book movie. Don Shirley lived in one of those elegant artist units above Carnegie wow, Hall. That's amazing. For more than fifty years. I didn't know they had those units. Fifty. Years. I didn't know those it's units so were there. It's so cool. And he had a throne. <laughs> what? And a toilet. That's uh, yeah. I hey, think I'm, I'm hey, I'm sitting on the throne. <laughs> I got you. That's how they say it in Connecticut. Is that right, Joe? <laughs> your turn, Jack. Oh, Jack, it's your turn. Oh, please. Oh, thank you. You're so fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did Tony Lip really write letters home to his wife, Dolores? Yes. In fact, to get the story correct while writing the screenplay, Nick used the letters that his father had written to his mother. It's true that at times the letters were, were co-authored by Don Shirley. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. there's a little bit of a Cyrano thing going on. Now, wasn't he was the, wasn't he a bouncer at the Copacabana mm -hmm. um, and, and knew Copa. Sinatra? And, and, and he became an actor and he was in The Sopranos. Right, he was in The Sopranos. He was yeah. them. Yeah. Did you know that, Matt? The real Tony Lip. Matt went to the throne. <laughs> so, Ted, yes. have you heard any news about it? <laughs> on the on the who is hosting the Oscars front? Well, it's so funny that that came up in the Twitter sphere and in film Twitter, and my my suggestion to everyone was to go hostless because it, you know, they really that they wanted is, to that's save where they are right now. They, that just came out on save, Friday. They wanted to save time. Mm -hmm. They wanted to cut time. They want. They already have all these actors presenting awards and mm -hmm. i think it's part of the deal that when you win one you have to come back the next year and present so they get a double dip you're you're nominated till you go mm -hmm. and then you win and then you have to present the next one it's kind of a nice well a nice can homage. i say this from the world of stand-up comedy Whenever the MC doesn't show up, yeah. and one of the comics goes, "Hey, we could just tag team it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you need someone at the helm. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this idea will fly. You don't think it'll fly? I really don't. Hostless. I think they're they're not going to go through it because it's just going to be a nightmare. It's too too much to manage. You know, manage. I I actually worked on a show, a live show called the Blockbuster Entertainment Awards back in the mm -hmm. '90s, where I was the live announcer, mm -hmm. and they always did it. It was produced by Ken Ehrlich, who does the Grammys and also the Emmys a lot of times. And they went hostless with that. And it did work. I mean, they were giving awards for mm -hmm. film, TV, and music. So they had just about everybody in the world there, huge stars. So it was really the job of the announcer you to took kind the of 
yeah. you know, introduce people. You actually become kind of the host without being on the show. The so omnipresent I, host exactly. in the sky. So yeah. I'm kind of thinking that whoever is going to do the announcing on the Oscars this year, if it goes hostless, will maybe take that role. That's you know. a, that's a, what? That could be oh, a really... Oh, we're in. Come in. Uh, <laughs> you just said the magic word, Joe. Oh, <laughs> yes, and it, it was hostless, and we didn't think we had and a you know what? And, and the duchess flew down, and you won $100. <laughs> well, if you think back at, uh, at Oscar's history, like when there was a streaker... Or when Jack Palance did one arm push ups. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, then you have those writers backstage like Carol Liefer and Bruce Valanche, and, and they're, Bruce Valanche. they're, you know, they're firing off those in the moment mm -hmm. lines. Oh, that, absolutely. Yeah. That I think are kind of key. And that, yeah, those are the things right. that people remember. Mm -hmm. I, Matt, are you there? I'm here. There we go. What Matt. do you think? Should the Oscars go hostless this year? I think they should get a female host, personally. Mm. <laughs> um, because I, I find it very hard to believe that they're even considering this option right now. Like you're trying to tell me literally there's nobody. There's Joe, nobody. Joe's available as I recall. <laughs> Joe is available. And, yes. Like, th that's the idea is like, we know that there are people available. It's that they probably have this whole weird preconceived notion in their mind of a, what makes a host B we got to get ratings C we got to appeal to a younger demographic mm -hmm. D we got to have somebody that's going to be a yes man yes woman and that that person just doesn't exist wow probably. kevin hart would never be a yes man no <laughs> i don't think. Oh, i think wow. that's why they're so good i forgot to mention the last thing you also have to have a clean record yeah okay. exactly <laughs> and that's why i think they can't find a host nobody has a clean record anymore Really? Well, I don't think that's entirely true necessarily, but they'll, at the same time, they'll find I don't dirt think that no matter what you do. Off all of those yeah, boxes yeah. Is the issue. All right. So, who who do you do you have any thoughts as to who should host it? If we're going to pick a woman, Ellen, she did the Emmys a yeah, bunch Ellen's of times. Ellen's always great. I mean, she's done the Oscars before too. Oh, she's done yeah. the Oscars. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Tina she's Fey. pretty beloved. I mean, Tina it'd be hard to find fault with that. I always think Tina. Yeah, I mean, Tina Fey's been suggested. My Rudolph has been suggested. Yeah. Tiffany Haddish mm -hmm. has even. Been suggested mm. i mean how about there's michelle a lot wolf. of options michelle wolf let's just like let's just, <laughs> why not let's just swing for it <laughs> yes swing for it yeah, yeah what, what about art and garfunkel <laughs> <laughs> wait i think he's dead serious art and garfunkel <laughs> no isn't that what's what's the name of that the the female duo oh oats oh. and garfunkel garfunkel and oats garfunkel and oats oh, oh yeah okay. they're good <laughs> they're good or actually paul simon and art garfunkel oh, that yeah <laughs> Patton Oswalt would actually be a, a good choice. He's yeah. very funny. fantastic. Yeah. Billy Eichner would be a good choice. How about our buddy, uh, Diane Warren? <laughs> <laughs> Diane Warren. <laughs> I'd much rather see her actually win an Oscar. Uh, than yeah, Oscar. there you go. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. How about RBG? We could just... Yeah. RBG could oh. mm -hmm. She'd be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold that crowd in the palm of her hand. <laughs> So what, how about, you, you know, it'd be great would be uh, I, I know it could never happen. But uh, uh, Bradley, who we're just talking about, um, Bradley, Bradley Cooper, Cooper oh, yeah. would Lady be a Gaga. great host yeah. and yeah. Lady Gaga and Lady. Oh, my God. That would be fantastic. Well, there you go. Right. Yeah. You're welcome. Academy. <laughs> I think we've so we solved. The I'm sorry. Hugh Jackman did it a few years ago, back right. in 2008. Right. Yeah. And he's somebody I thought did an amazing job, song right. and dance man, yeah. mm -hmm. unbelievable charisma. And I don't know why, maybe he just viewed it as a one and done, <laughs> knock that off the bucket list, never have to do that again sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But man, especially after Greatest Showman last year, mm -hmm. he really is a great showman. He is. Totally. He's got happen. everything yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. I yeah. think it's a ton of work and also it's really risky. And if it goes south, it takes years sort of to recover. Well, it's a bit of a thankless job. Is I that mean, it? Yeah. I, it's, yeah. It really, it feels that way. You There's know? no upside. That's true. Right? Yeah. 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 It's kind of like. I mean, you're going to get ridiculed no matter no matter what. Right. There's it's like, yeah. no It's like being on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's, let's do some Facebook feed time. This week, I think you guys are going to find this one interesting. So. All right, so this, so Jimmy Brogan, comedian Jimmy Brogan, posted this about a week ago, and I screen capped it so that I would remember to use it on the show. And it's a good thing I did because it's gone. Oh, they took <laughs> it down. Facebook really? has taken it down. Wow. All right, so the tweet, uh, the the Facebook post read. Um, this is Jimmy speaking. This guy in Sweden is pretending to be me. He is using my name and my picture from a TV show. Uh, that I did in 1979 called Out of the Blue. I've, re I've reported it three times to Facebook and they refuse to do anything about it. Their reply is that it doesn't go against their community standards. Any advice? And so then, and he's posting it. Now keep in mind that most of his friends on Facebook are comedians. Yeah. <laughs> so he gets uh, 
for example, all I have is from whatever I screen capped. Yeah. We can no longer scroll through them, and they were hilarious. But Robert Raymond comments, uh, having someone out there known as the Swedish <laughs> Jimmy Brogan seems pretty cool to me. <laughs> Brett Soul wrote, would that be pronounced Yimmy Brogan? Yeah. And I, at some Yern point, Gefern de Hern Gehen. <laughs> at some point, I commented, "It's funny that you thought you would get useful advice from comedians." <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then I screen capped it, and um, I would read you more of the hilarious comments. But the comedians uh, did spring into action, and they did file reports for Jimmy. Ah. And we have an update. Yes. All right. The update is: Hey, gang! I just got a message from Facebook that they did take down the page of the fake Swedish Jimmy Brogan, as well as my post about it. Hmm. I appreciate all your help in reporting him. And as I said to Louise Palanker in the post, <laughs> your comments turned frustration into hilarity. So all is good. Although I hear that the fake Swedish Jimmy Brogan is appearing this weekend in Malvo, the, com- the comedy hoos. The comedy hoos. The comedy hoos. <laughs> the comedy hoos. The comedy <laughs> you see what I did there? So what I want to know is, all right, so they solved the problem. Why did they also why have to take, take it down, down every because any it never evidence happened. of it? That's why. I don't get that. It never yeah. actually happened. <laughs> right. Like, really, Facebook, are you that prideful? That is weird. <laughs> that is very Because strange. there were a lot of really funny lines in that original post. Yeah. You'd, you'd think that would be, be kind of a cool skin. thing right now when Facebook's a little bit under fire. Yeah. It would show that they have a sense of humor. Yeah. That's what they need. So who do you suppose is in Sweden going, <laughs> doing this? You know what? Yeah. Well, you know what'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I could be the Swedish. I could be the Swedish Jimmy Brogan. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts, Matt? How do you feel about Facebook as opposed to Twitter? Um, I view Facebook as a little bit more personal. You know, friends mm-hmm. that you're close with, family, uh, that sort of thing. And I, I try to keep the two. I try to keep the two separate as much as I can. Yeah. Um. It used to be, I feel like Facebook was a place where you would put like morose, uh, woe is me, I had a crappy day status just to see if you would get some likes to make you right. feel better. Right. Um, where now I feel like Facebook has just become uh, another place to share information. Oh, hey, found this funny video, this cool article. Um, oh, there's a trailer for this new movie. It's brightened up my day, you know? And, uh, you know, I think that that's, or at least in my world, that's what the internet has mostly become now is it's become... Uh, everybody trying to use it for positivity and for mm. sharing information. Mm. But does it feel like there's more of that on Facebook? Because it feels like for me on Facebook, it's more people I actually know. Mm. And on Twitter, yeah. I know very it can be anybody. Yeah, I yeah. don't know about you guys because you guys are really good at Twitter. Do you tend to not know most of the people? Yeah, I don't know anybody. You don't know anybody, Matt. This is you the know me, buddy. You know me. <laughs> so, so let's let's talk about film Twitter for a moment. Now, it it feels like from an outsider in order to play that you really have to have your game together mm-hmm. no. you <laughs> because how do you so how does it how do you find and store up all those gifts oh it's, <laughs> it's they're all there they're where all there. where like they're what, all a person who's search. never gift you can just how, search how for it, it it'll pop up you search for them mm. and then do you yeah. save it to your computer or can you upload it from nope. no it's all there just tap it with your button uh, just, just tap ooh, with your finger tap and share Really? And then I've actually I've actually gone in and wanted to tweet something and I you know I've had an idea of of a gift that I want to put with that tweet to make it the perfect tweet mm-hmm. and then you go searching for the gif of the scene from the movie that you want mm-hmm. and you find something that isn't the exact scene but it's another scene so I, I got the gif and I'll go back and I'll edit my tweet to fit better with to the match gif. the, uh, the, oh, the, the visual. Yeah. So if you're doing a Google search can you put it on gifs like you can put it on photos? So it just pulls up gifts. I don't think you can. So. You can, can do you? that no. too. But there's there's a lot. Uh, the shorter uh, the shorter thing is there's a gif button under your tweet, and it has a yeah. gif library. In oh, it. right. But you can upload it too. You can have. You can also <laughs> upload to that gif mm-hmm. library. Can you put music in there that goes? <laughs> oh, so who's oh, making all that? the gifs? Who's the little gif elf? <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> um, if you're smart, it's the production companies and the platforms and everybody yeah. like that. I mean, Filmstruck has great gifs. You know, R.I.P. Filmstruck, but they had awesome gifts of old movies. Mm. So it was it was great when your search. You know, I was I was trying to get everybody to see Jacques Tati movies because I love Jacques Tati, and and nobody was talking about him. So I I got to use a lot of Filmstruck gifts, and they're actually lower thirded. They have a you know a little oh, bug for Filmstruck. So just nice. easy so easy to extra. use. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, is everybody ready to play? Film Twitter roulette. I can't <laughs> wait. So for, for what's Twitter trending? 
I just thought, because it was all politics today, mm-hmm. <laughs> Nancy, Chuck, everybody. Oh, yeah. I guess Pence, it looks like he's at a tennis match. Did anyone see this? Really? So no, Pence no, is sitting not. between Trump and, and, and Chuck. And, uh, Where are they playing tennis at this time of the year? Well, they're not. They're okay. not. But it, oh, oh, you're see. gonna see a lot of gifts of Pence because he didn't do oh, anything. He just sits there, and uh, he kind of okay. It's like really slow motion ten- tennis. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, like when looks... Joe plays, you mean? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jack. Oh, I, I appreciate it. Yes. All right. So I couldn't find anything that was Twitter trending. So I thought, other than politics, so I thought, well, let's just dive into hashtag film Twitter and see what we find. All righty. How long do we have to scroll before we find Ted? Uh, not. <laughs> oh, there's Matt. Name one movie that grew better in your mind as 2018 went on, and then name one movie that grew worse. Ooh, let's let's click wow. on the com. <gasps> you got 209 comments. Wow. So <laughs> Twitter famous. Okay, read whatever you feel like that you see that inspires you. Infinity War getting better, A Star Is Born getting worse oh, for that person. Yeah, better. Mm. Yeah. I can't Annihil- read it. Sorry. Annihilation, Annihilation and Black Annihilation. Mansion getting better mm-hmm. and Deadpool 2 getting worse. Thank mm, you. That's interesting. Oh, First Man I, getting better. That's interesting. I, I, I like First really Man. Thought I'm one of those people who really like that movie. It's a really thought-provoking question because, you know, I always say that the best films are the ones that you just find yourself continuing to think about. Yeah. Thinking mm-hmm. about the themes exactly. and sort of exploring. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good question. Yeah. So what about, how would you answer that question, Matt? Well, for me, the movies that, to whoever just said a minute ago about how there are certain movies you constantly just come back to and you're thinking about over and over. I know for me this year, I can't stop thinking about burning. I can't mm. stop thinking about uh, Suspiria, the mm. Luca Guadagnino remake. I also cannot stop thinking about Annihilation. I keep coming back to these movies over and over and I keep, and even though uh, other than Annihilation, I haven't seen the others uh, multiple times. I, <clears throat> I, I, I feel like upon repeat viewings, I will get something new out of them each mm-hmm. time, especially if there's a passage of time mm-hmm. uh, where there are other movies that, yeah, Deadpool 2 would be one where upon first viewing, I think because when you're watching that with like a rowdy audience, an excited mm-hmm. audience, mm-hmm. Yeah. you kind of get bought into the hype a little bit. Then yeah. a little while that hype wears off and you're like, eh, was that really as good? as It, <laughs> it really you know, wasn't that good. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. You know, that, that sometimes <laughs> happens. Yeah. I think with a Star is Born, you might come home and watch the other versions and be like, Yikes. yeah, this was pretty <laughs> derivative. Not, no, I, I mean, no, 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 no. Well, it's the same story. Well, it's the same story, yeah. but I mean, I just think it's much more interesting than the ones that are so vaunted, you know, from the past. Like, uh, not not talking about the 70s one, but the <laughs> 50s you... one, which everyone talks about as, it's that's the Judy one. Judy Garland. I love Judy Garland. Don't get me wrong. Jack. I just, it's just that it's, I don't know. I mean, you could see her falling apart in the movie, which is very hard for me to but watch. But it was art imitating life. <laughs> don't you get Wait it? Wait a minute, you're right. I should have thought of No, I mean honestly as a you can literally it's just it's hard for me to see it because mm. you can see her physically and and emotionally unraveling because and she's such a fantastic singer. In fact, one of my here well, this is not part of it. Okay. Here we go. We're going in okay, deep. We're, going we're deep. getting we're going deep, deep in the jack. Yeah, psychological profile. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> but Judy Garland and Barbara Streisand when they sang together on television mm. in the yeah. 60s. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite things I've ever seen on TV. It's unbelievable mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it goes around so facebook good. occasionally yeah i've seen mm-hmm. that yeah so ted what movies have you found yourself thinking and rethinking um i like annihilation but i'm actually more i guess i'm more in the tv space yeah so i think um i'm excited to see roma i hear some oh, mixed, right. some yeah, mixed reviews that. of yeah. that and i wanted to um figure out whether what whether it's hype or whether it's that i think maniac was something that i was really into when i was watching it and then afterwards I don't know how much it's carried on since then so. mm-hmm. do you do you both tend to or do all four of you tend to watch films that you love more than once yes oh, oh yeah many times absolutely yeah. really mm-hmm. yeah I just watched uh, on a flight from uh, New York to LA uh, Young Frankenstein for about oh. the 80th time <laughs> <so much. laughs> And and you, you, I get stuck in a wormhole on YouTube going to all of the outtakes. You know uh, that that happens at least a couple times a year. You know. Oh, yeah. that's fun. But I'll rent a movie and say like, uh, you know, Wendy will say, "Oh, I, I, what did you like it? Can we watch?" And I'll, I'll watch it again. I mean, I have no yeah. problem watching it even the next day. It's, <clears throat> it's fine with me because really? I know I'll see. Is new that things. due to the fact that your memory slow. is not so good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Jimmy. He takes notes. <laughs> yeah, I, I. What about you, Weez? Do you uh, I find see... yourself re? 
watching? No, I want to see something I haven't seen. Because I feel like if I'm going to spend time, I'd like to see something that then I will have an awareness. Then when it comes up conversationally, I'll know what people are talking about. There's so much out there, too. Yeah, and there's so much out there. It's true. I don't know if I'm going, you know, certain James Bond films. I mean, it it just clicks. I will watch any episode of Will and Grace over and over and over again. Yeah, Yeah. I I know people who will watch Friends forever. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watch, just I made a big Cheers. syndication yeah. deal. And, uh, yeah, it's, you hear it's huge among teens today, too, which is really interesting yeah. to me. Teens yeah. you, have you know always, this? always loved Friends when it was on for the first time and ever since then because it's like, for them, it's, it's the kind of a side. preview yeah. of what adult life is going yeah, to be it like. Is exactly that you're still going to have this like, family too. that you create around you <laughs> and that it, you're going to be okay. Like. By the way, there was an article I read where they recreated the friends' apartments and what they would look like in 2018, oh. which I thought was really cool. So, so, they would go yeah. for what, 10200 well, $10, a month? Yeah, <laughs> 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 they're control. about this big in New York. You would know about this, Matt. That's the apartment in New York. Jeez. No, all, <laughs> all the different you know styles uh, changing the furniture and all of that. So right. let's oh, talk I about yeah. let's talk yeah. about film Twitter polls and what it, what are we hoping to accomplish? Engagement or some sort of definitive answer to life's questions? Yeah, I don't think there's anything definitive about <laughs> film Twitter no. at all. Um, it's definitely about like can you you know can you stir up can you stir the pot enough? Um, I saw a post today, uh, film on Twitter. It was like 16 most overrated films of 2018. Mm-hmm. And I loved it because my favorite, one of my favorite gifts is from Mad Max. Mm-hmm. And it's basically just, uh, um, Hardy pointing upwards and it says that's clickbait because it's basically it's just like, <laughs> it's just egging your, your right. audience of followers to just say, I hate you yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, I love that. That's, that's funny. too funny. I usually use polls as a way to settle a debate. Oh, okay. Like if I'm uh, debating with somebody and they're arguing with me on a certain issue or something, I'll be like, Let, let's put it to a poll. Let's let's see what the people think. You good, know? good. And that, that's what I'll generally use polls for now. I used to use polls as, for my own just curiosity about things mm-hmm. and not because I actually wanted to know the answer. I was just curious to get a gauge of what general consensus was. You know, what I'm starting to realize a lot more now is depending on how you word to tweet and what hashtags or keywords you use that poll can get skewed pretty yeah. easily by mm. rabid fan bases online for certain things yeah oh, so, so they'll just send the word out like go ahead and vote all the lady gaga fans will just start voting wow. yeah yeah <laughs> wow yeah there's there's a lot of that that's happened uh this year especially uh there's a lot of uh people a lot of people within the film industry to have very very passionate fan bases mm. yeah mm. and then like around when Captain Marvel came out. You put a poll out and has Captain Marvel and and some DC comics or Aquaman or something in there, and it'll skew to the Marvel side. And and then if you do it around the Aquaman trailer release, then there's more of a zeitgeist of you know people wanting to like the DC stuff. So yeah. there's that big there's a big divide of Marvel and DC. Um, so it's all mm. it's all over. Yeah. So have you guys had to block anyone, or have you been blocked, or like what's your Twitter history in terms of controversy and having frenemies? Oh, I get blocked. I think every single day. You get, <laughs> you get, you, day yes. You get blocked. So what kind of stuff do you do you uh, tweet that's controversial? Yeah. What would cause that, Matt? Um, you know what? I really don't know sometimes. Um, and I also too, I don't like, I know people that have like tools and things like that, like built in apps that like tell them who blocked them and who, mm. or who muted them and things like that. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you have a problem with me, I'm always welcome to talk it out and try to come to some form of an understanding. I do believe that, you know, actually realizing there's a human being on the other end mm-hmm. of that device is very important still and it's something that we're losing track of Mm. and i wish more people also gave me and just others in general like that same level of courtesy but i think that you know for some people that you know it just it's a quick thing it's an easy thing and like i was saying before utilizing mutes and uh blocking and things like that on twitter to try and cater twitter to be a happy place for you Hmm. If that means getting rid of some people, not even because of anything that's a reflection of their character, maybe they just said one thing one day, just one thing. Yeah. And it was like a, an opinion or a take you just simply didn't agree with, but mm-hmm. they choose to then 
define you as a person for all eternity <laughs> because of that. Yeah. And maybe that's what it is. I think it's random. I think it's, you know, the more opinionated you are, the more you're opening yourself up to it more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in order to gain notoriety, sometimes you have to be opinionated. I so think you absolutely do. It's tough. And you have to have tough skin if you want to be able to get Boy, through it. Me, sure. I'm not interested in fame. I'm not interested in, you know, being big or anything like that. I just love movies and I want to express that to the world because I, I, I don't know. I've just found it's hard in like real life <laughs> to <laughs> express that to people sometimes. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, I saw this great movie. And they're just like, oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's, that's part of what I love about film Twitter. It's, you know, I don't, I don't get to see as many movies as I want. And there's so many things, spoiler alert, you know, it's, if you have spoiler alert and if you live with the people that you can only interact with in real life, then you can't necessarily talk about the obscure movie you saw or have a reference for something else. So you can find the, it within film Twitter, there's, you know, that they're passionate about film and then you can find sub niches of like Tati fans and, you know, all the little, all the little fun, quirky things where you'd have to go back to college and take that obscure, you know, French cinema class. Well, I think that Twitter is sort of like an extension of life because it's like the more passionate you are about things, the more interesting your life will be. And so if you if you're passionately expressing your interests on Twitter, you'll receive that back. And you know, amongst that will be some haters or some people that you have rubbed the wrong way by saying something about Gaga that they don't want to I, I'm not mm-hmm. seeing that today. You right. know, I can't. Mm-hmm. You the know, way it's not like life is though that people who will reject you and, and negate your opinions are probably not going to do that when they're just sitting across from you. And well, I, and I, I, I will. And I <laughs> well, a lot of people will. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I take great know. great issue with yeah. that statement, Jack. Could you, <laughs> I'm going to move over here. You know what? I'm blocking you. Uh, <laughs> I aspire no, no, you're to be right. blocked. You, you won't dismiss someone as quickly. As like easily. like Matt yeah. is saying, it won't just be like, oh, I can't see that today. It'll be like, oh, my grandmother is so annoying. But, you know, she makes great brownies yes. you know it'll be <laughs> as long as there's brownies in it and there's right? no brownies on twitter <laughs> no. that's the problem <laughs> Hashtag, no, it's not life Hashtag brownie. <laughs> yeah so I, I mean i think you have to be yourself and be expressive for it to be fun if you're just blandly mm-hmm. and i and i like disagreeing with people on twitter too i think i think there is a way to respect and to you know and and have strong opinions about things and and listen to people that you disagree with vehemently and yet, you know, even people that are brand new to like a conversation with me, I won't block them right away. I'll I usually dig into their profile. Wait five minutes. I'll, I dig in their profile a little bit, and I and I see whether find their address. There, because sometimes people will troll to troll, <laughs> and then sometimes yeah. people uh, will be, you know, will actually be expressing their own opinions, and that troll to troll is worthless to me. So yeah. That, okay. So troll the troll means that if someone's trolling you, you go to their profile and, and you're like, who is this jackass? <laughs> right. Yeah. Is that trolling the troll? No, no, no. For me, if they troll to troll, it's oh, just, oh, they're, oh, troll, they're yeah. just being gotcha. contrarian yeah. to yeah. whatever. Oh I'm boy. Yeah. Oh, so it's someone who's getting frustrated all day long and then they just come home, sit in front of their computer and they just like tip tables over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Like, exactly. There's enough, there's enough anger in the real world yes <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that no, anger not. associated with something that i'm trying to find escape and joy in yeah right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well Good. my dad used to say that people at at sporting events who would just like be screaming at the coach or whatever right those are people that just got screamed at all day <laughs> right. and by their, by boss, their yeah. boss and then they come to the game and then and so it's like now there's twitter Okay. Yeah. Let right. it all out. Yeah. All, all the dogs that used to be get kicked coming home, they're happy for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think that if it's they, a good point. if they, if they did the opposite of what they feel like doing, if they just spread love, then they'd receive love back, and that would be more soothing than just the release of. But but con- conflict is is one of the great joys of of anything of jo- of Twitter or whatever, as long as it's like Ted is saying, you know, you pre- you you, you come about it and yeah, it's, yeah mm-hmm. toward as towards as, something as opposed to against something. If as long as it's healthy and disagreeing, where I have a problem is once the name calling mm-hmm. uh, is played, because there I yeah, think that that's silly. You, if you're opening Twitter and you're reading something that's making your the blood come up into your face, that's not right. good. Yeah. But if you're just seeing someone who has a different opinion about Boy Erased, you're like, well, I disagree. But if someone has said, you know, you whatever. Yeah. Well, my one of my favorite ones because of the holiday season is 
is Die Hard right. a, is Christmas it a Christmas movie? movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so is this the stuff of a that, heated controversy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I okay, think what's the verdict? That could, could go on let's forever. Let's do a poll. Let's do a poll, Matt. <laughs> All right, so I'll what put a poll are, you know, right I, now. All right. <laughs> all right, so before I guarantee yeah, you go ahead, I was going to say, I actually read for something yesterday that was a direct setup of Die Hard as a Christmas movie, because like as a feel-good Christmas <laughs> yeah. movie, and that's how they cut it. So before we close out, because you know what, jo- uh, Joe is yes. double podcast right. booked today. <laughs> wow. Podcast. He is just going podcast to podcast. Oh, my the podcast gosh. Circuit. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so before we close, I would I want to say, what's everybody's favorite holiday movie, and what should people check out if they haven't okay go ahead well i mean love actually i I love love. oh and and to go way back (laughs) yeah holiday inn which is really not a a holiday or a christmas uh it's not like white christmas holiday inn inspired white christmas the film but um i do i always watch holiday inn holiday inn uh, is the one with fred astaire fred astaire and uh, bing crosby fred astaire is that the one with sisters uh no I believe that might be White Christmas. I, I okay. don't know. Yeah. All right. So no, we this have, is before yeah. women were allowed on the screen. <laughs> really, <laughs> really <laughs> love actually. Love actually, or Holiday Inn, mm-hmm. or okay, so, Ted. Well, obscure. I like the I like the new one. The Christmas Chronicles was was great, and I didn't want to like it, and I thought it was going to be trash, and I watched it, and I had fun, and oh, and, cool. I, and I watched it again. So for the for the recent ones, it's that, and then Anne, my wife, and and the kids and I, we always watch all the. Uh, the Santa Claus movies. Yeah. Every year like around. Miracle on 34th or? No, no, the Santa Claus. Oh, like the Santa Claus. The Tim oh, with the oh, Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Yeah, Tim yeah. Allen. Yeah. Tim Allen. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? You know, I, I will say that I've been, people have tried to get me to love Love Actually, and uh, I just find it's a bit too sacred. Hey, for this me. is not about uh, getting on top of somebody. I'm for just saying just that trying to show you where you're wrong. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to help we want you. to know what your favorite is. Oh, then you don't I, have to make fun I have of nothing mine. To say. I, I mean, I'm going to really. cheat. I'm going to cheat and say it's not a movie, but I just absolutely adore the Grinch, the original Grinch. Oh, I just think oh the original Grinch. Fantastic yeah. in every Matt? way. Matt, uh, Die Hard. <laughs> there we go yeah, it's, there it's it is. settled now can I answer when Harry met Sally because it takes place over the course of like a whole year and so I guess yeah. no. 100% okay no. yay alright good no. <laughs> alright I want to thank everyone for being with us and uh, thank you Connor McGlynn Francesco DeManda Thanks, guys. Jack Daniel uh, Ted Willett Joseph Briano Dina Friedman David Court I am Louise Palenker we are your new favorite podcast and we Bye, will see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh, and thank you, Matt Neglia. Thanks, Matt. See you, thank Matt. you. Yeah, thank you all. Bye-bye.